So, welcome to detailed structural design. So, we are discussing uh, jacket platform. Now, you find that uh, this uh, offshore structural design is more rigorous than your ships. Um, in the detailed structural design, we have um, under project management. So, mo uh, the, all these uh, unlike ships, you know, the, the, they are not uh, the project, but the <coughs> here actually you have to do according to site. So, it is built at site. So, project management is required. Under project management, you have a project administrator, then uh, design engineering and design drawing. So, these are three crucial <coughs> items of project management. So, if you are in the offshore um, uh, field, you will be as a in the uh, you will be put under a project manager. So, project manager, then the hierarchy is your project engineer, and then you have lead engineers. So, that is how the system is goes. So, most of you, you have if you want to go to the level of project manager, should have some management managerial capabilities. So, now here besides the project administration actually you have to handle a um, lot of people out here. So, one of your the, your major is the client, then you have vendors, then you have all the people from the um, class or regulatory requirements. So, these are the, uh, so you have to be very happy, efficient in this Riasu type of work. Now, the other part is your design engineering. So, this uh, basically consists of analysis. Now, this is also very crucial because of the, um, the loading aspect. So, I was talking about all this because the final structural design will depend on the uh, load characteristics, then your flow requirements and all these things you have to know. Otherwise, then and the last one is your design drawings which is prepared. This is prepared for cons uh, construction and also for certification. Construction and certification requirements. So, the activity is quite large in the oil field, you see. Uh, so, coming to after, after this, uh, this is called, um, uh, you have prepared all this, then you have to select design parameters, selection of selection of design parameters. Now, in ships, uh, how do you start? You start at uh, the design spiral from the owner's requirement, then you find out, you make the detail, you draw, you go to your line span GA and make all the structural drawings and all that sort of thing. But here actually, I talked a lot about the now, what is called the field development aspects or field requirement, you know, your platform is part of the oil field. So, there are field requirements, specific field requirements, you have to start with from that. Uh, so, after that you have to um, go into these three types of uh, um, categories of work. So, anyway, so now the selection of design parameters, how you selection of the pile diameter sizes and all these things. So, you have to prepare what is called a document, a design document is prepared which is called BOD or basis for design. Basis of rather you write structural design. Now, this document has to be prepared is a sort of a contractual document. Now, the client will always want to know how you have proceeded. That is why I told you, the nowadays uh, um, for structural analysis and all this and uh, ships also, uh, you require fundamental analysis. You know, the LRS or ABS or DNV will require the fundamental calculations to be forward to them. Sometimes they do not 
specify a particular thickness, say um, uh, thickness of a column or thickness of a pipe or thickness of shell plate is not specified, but they will be happy if you can convince them how you have arrived at the plate thickness. Okay. So, uh, whenever you go to offshore or particularly in the offshore field, you will find there are a number of uh, all these structural engineering programs, Strudel, ANSYS and uh, SACS and all these things. Uh, but you see the uh, client is also a very knowledgeable person, you cannot easily fool him, you know. So, he will ask for the BOD document or basis of design, on what basis you have selected a particular say structural program or what is the uh, foundation or what is the basis of your pile size, on what basis you have taken. Okay. So, the, that you have to explain to him and the point that you have to convince is, is the, um, the most important is the load criteria. This we will talk about the you have to convince him of what is the, what type of loading you have taken on the platform. So, platform loading is, this is very crucial. What is the, uh, in civil engineering normally they call uh, live load and dead load. Okay. So, this I think we have talked about the, the other point that you have to convince him about extreme loads. See, your client is a, uh, you, you are in talking terms with uh, say one of the oil companies that is your Mobil or Exxon or whatever it is. Now, now, they have their own engineers and specialists. So, you are just talking at that level. So, um, here actually a lot of knowledge is required on extreme loads coming from the uh, waves, storms, etc. Normally, the analysis is done based on a 100 year return period. 100 year uh, 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 return period of storm or extreme load. So, when you go to offshore, actually your uh, ships you have analyzed based on a simple that linear wave theory and you have used what is called the trochoidal wave. I do not know whether you have done this that a hull girder bending structural uh, analysis, but here actually the same thing is not that simple, you know. Uh, so, first of all your, the jacket platform does not look like a ship, it is a tower type of platform and there are horizontal loads acting. So, it is, a, it is not resting on two wave crests, okay. So, that is one situation. So, where you have the lot of uh, uh, overturning moment and sliding force will come on the base of the structure. So, unlike your ships which normally the, the failure is by bending, they call it bending failure, the hull gutter bending that you have done. So, hull gutter bending and shear, but here actually you will find a lot of other forces are coming uh, onto the platform. So, um, the problem is much more severe and uh, more so because of this extreme load, because your structure has to survive the extreme load, it is fixed on the seabed. You cannot move the structure away from the seabed and you are investing say thousands of crores onto the oil field. So, this is one of the uh, regions which we have to clearly specify in BOD that is called the basis of structural design. Now, here actually you have to convince the owner or the client of uh, how you have taken the uh, load configurations. Now, here actually uh, in BOD, um, you break up in, uh, into this. First, you specify your, um, all this thing is uh, the general data that is required and these are site specific. So, location is going to be specified. Location, um, <coughs> client number, etcetera, all this is, will come on the first page or rather you write client name and then uh, uh, document name and date. So, this keeps on changing, name and so you start with this. Now, after this you go to platform functions and configurations. So, this is very important because uh, the design actually will be based on the functional requirement of the platform. 
So, it is platform function and configuration. Configuration means I told you how many decks you are going to give to the client, what is the area requirement. Okay. So, he will ask about this. So, first thing is there are two uh, in jacket platforms there are or in any offshore structure the first thing is there are two things which are define superstructure. So, I told you these are all the deck design type of uh, uh, platforms or deck loading type you know. Now, the, what is the structure above the deck that is called a superstructure. Now, here you have you have to decide you have to tell about deck configurations. You have to configure actually main deck or configure decks you start with this. Actually, most of you are uh, you are not taking uh, training in all the offshore uh, this thing you know, companies, then you will have some idea about the configured decks, then this uh, uh, including area and including area and number of decks. Uh, this is actually sim similar to your GAF ship. So, I told you this is very important because of the load that is going to the self weight that is coming on to the first it will come on to the support frame and then you have to take the whole load down onto the jacket. So, this is the one of the prime areas. Now, here actually number of decks then uh, deck also has number of support legs. So, these are called number of legs etcetera and etcetera. these have to be decided. I am not going into details number of legs, base etcetera. In civil engineering they call the levels base, leg spacing. So, this depends on the floor area, leg spacing. Then uh, the other most prime is the location of wells. So, this is actually not a novice job. So, a person who is well experienced into this, then he can do the efficient GA layout. Now, you want to start, you have to start from your basic design, you have to take a basic platform. So, location of <coughs> now, um, uh, location of wells, after this you prepare, now decks have to be serviced, you know. So, you have to prepare proper access, this is called an access plan the ships also here in the GA that is you have segregated all the holds, compartments, areas etcetera. Now, all these areas have to be assessed. So, you have to pre prepare how you go or enter into the holds, how you enter the decks, what are the machinery requires, some of the machinery you will find is going above one or two decks like your uh, this thing, your uh, heat compensating device, <coughs> drill drilling equipments and all that. So, they will go to number of tiers of decks unlike in ships where it is stored in a hole, but here actually the support will come support to the drill string or your rig will come from number of decks. So, decks are also acting as supports to your conductor pipe, your drill collars and all these equipments support. See, decks actually give support to equipment also vertically deck support vertical, you will not find this in ships, vertical to equipments. So, here actually if you uh, take the disposition of the equipments vertically, then you have to provide support at the deck level. So, those things you have to cater and you have to uh, tell your client that you have this is what you have done. Then of course, the access plan, access plan means you, you have to provide hatchways, then stairways, how you do them. Okay. Now, this you have to conform to certain rules because of the uh, fire. Normally, in ships you have to prepare a access plan, they call based on your 
LSC life saving appliances or FFA requirement such that a person particular portion of the ship has caught fire you have to quickly evacuate the person from another extreme end. So, same thing the assets plan has to be prepared. So, deck support vertical to equipments or you can go horizontal. So, this is a very crucial area this is called the superstructure design. Now, after this you define now this is actually in a nutshell if you go to your uh, this thing uh, on offshore you will find all this detailed design they do. Now, after this defined substructure. So, this is a typical offshore engineering word this is called this is called it as a substructure that is the structure which is below the deck or supporting the deck. Now, substructure actually consists basically of jacket, jacket is the jacket essentially defines what <coughs> jacket is a cover for your piles whenever I say you wear your jacket jacket means a cloth which covers your body. So, this is jacket actually is a cover for your pile. So, jacket configuration how you design. Now, here actually this, uh, this is all part of your BOD remember that or basis of design which you are actually uh, convincing the client at this stage the client is being convinced. Now, here actually you have to tell him the detail about uh, superstructure you have already told about how your decks and all these things you have done then you come to the structure basically the jacket configuration that will you have to tell him about number of legs. legs are essentially your columns then if you have skirt piles skirt piles are short piles which are uh, fi fixed to the perimeter of the columns through which you have drive short piles that is called skirt piles leg batter that is the slant of the leg now why the columns are given a batter that is to increase the base area to resist the overtoppling moment. Your deck area may be this much small, but your base area will be larger than this. In invariably, your base area is going to be large. So, obviously, the pile has to <coughs> be fixed at the corner of the base and also the corner of the deck. So, it is going to be slanted because this dimension is less than your base dimension. So, that is called leg batter or a batter pile. So, piles when you, you normally the uh, building piles are all vertical like this, but offshore if you go it is this there is a rake or a slant. Now, here actually how you drive piles on the rake is uh, vertical piles are easy you just put the pile hammer on top and keep on driving, but here actually the force you have to do it on a slant. So, it is more critical more critical because of leg failure. So, legs are given a batter and then you find out what is called primary bracings. Bracings are support that you give to the legs in the jacket. Then after this you have to this is coming onto the substructure. Then spacing of well connectors or rather spacing of well conductor pipes. This will come under the substructure. Then uh, pump casings. all these things you have to decide. Then the last one is uh, in the substructure the is called mud mat. So, mud mat actually gives the bearing area to the jacket although the piles your piles are not giving you the base area is not it. Uh, 
Now, whenever you do pile design, there are two types of forces that will come. One is called, suppose you are driving a pile, one is called the skin friction that is coming on the uh, perimeter of the pile and the other is the base force. Pile is actually supported by skin friction coming from the soil and your end force that is coming at the tip of the pile from the soil. So, similarly, if this is your jacket, now jacket, you may, suppose you do not give the mud mat, then uh, 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 the jacket is actually on piles. Whenever you do the design a jacket platform, you will find that the column piles that is actually supporting your deck. Okay. Now, the, in case of extreme loads where there is a large amount of overturning moment, now the pile does not have a your large base area or end area. Your end area is quite small as you compare with the, the surface area or the skin area. So, that you are not getting the bearing support. Okay. Now, you have to increase the bearing support or to uh, also to resist the toppling moment. So, you have to that, that, that is the jacket footprint at the corners you will find huge plates that is in given like this. Uh, at the center of course, you have to keep it open. Why? Because your marine riser, your that uh, well template and all these pipings have to come. So, obviously, the mud mat is not rectangular, but you, at the corners you give heavy plates. So, that actually resists the whole jacket from going down into the soil. Whereas, the soil has to do the bearing function. So, the mud mat will come under substructure and then the other smaller items are boat landings. This boat landing will come on the jacket, not come on the deck, barge bumpers. And the other is riser protectors. Now, uh, your jacket platform is a fixed structure. Okay. So, the risers that are coming from the seabed and right down to the deck, but in between how you are going to uh, uh, this fix the riser. Uh, your one fix will be fixity on the seabed, another fixity on the, but in between also you have to give fixity, is not it? Otherwise, uh, it is going to bend like this. So, you have to clamp at some levels because the jacket is a tower say 100 meters or 40 meters, 70 meters high. So, these are called riser protectors you have to come there. So, these are the things you have to uh, this uh, the superstructure and substructure will come under the BOD. Next is environmental conditions. So, your client is going to ask you about this. that you have designed a jacket for what type of environmental conditions. Uh, ships, uh, how do you design ships? Ships are normally designed, that is your cargo or oil tanker. Of course, they, uh, it goes under a specific sea state, that sea state will come under your load line calculations, ships normally. And your, you do it the hull gutter bending calculation based on the load profile that is the wave profile okay but similar things is in in the offshore this is more rigorous so here what are the environmental conditions that are special the first one i told you which goes into the structural design is water depth so water depth is the major criteria which defines the size of the platform. Obviously, the platform size will increase with increase in water depth, is not it? Now, you cannot increase the platform size longitudinally. If you increase along the length or along the height, also you have to increase along the width because your overturning moment will be larger. Now, if you want to resist overturning moment, the first thing is you increase the base area. 
is not it in prevent toppling. So, that is water depth actually with the, this is you normally designed from mean water level MWL. Now, after this you design winds sorry. design <coughs> here have to be very specific design wind wave current now normally this is uh, you specify 100 year extreme conditions so in short they call it hurricane Now, the hurricane condition, I think it is Beaufort 7, this is governed by C state. So, your client will ask you about what C state you have has formed the basis of design, C state 7 or C state 6. So, this is given as normally you do for C state 7. So, 100 year extreme storm conditions. Hmm very crucial. Then oh, from, uh, from this what you get normally you have to the C states normally specified in C spectra. So, I talked about all this spectra at the beginning of the class. What spectra you have take over, taken John Swap, Pearson Moskowitz, Brett Snyder and why you have taken. Now, normally you will find at a particular location none of these spectra are applicable. So, those data you have to get from the oceanographer. So, this actually comes under met ocean engineering, met ocean. So, you have to uh, confer or you have to coordinate with the met ocean engineer. So, he is going to give you all this data. A spectra cannot be one single peak, it may be double peak also. And why you have chosen a particular spectra will come here. Then you have tides, tides and storm surges. Tidal height, storm surge height. So, that will dictate your structure size and wind is wind there are two types of wind, wind 100 year storm Hundred year storm. Now, you base it on two aspects one is called the steady wind. steady wind and the other is called gust wind, a sudden increase in the wind velocity. So, this is normally you, this is normally calculated <coughs> 10 meters above mean water level. So, this you have to figure out from the Met Ocean Engineer. Okay. Now, after you have done the environmental conditions, then you go to foundation design. Now, here actually this is distinctly designed from your ships, because ships are not sitting on the seabed is not it. The ships are more parameters, ships are actually founded on water. Foundation design is basically you have to do <coughs> the net weight that is weight minus buoyancy, net weight coming to soil.
Now here soil characteristics soil characteristics required. Now here actually before the jacket is fixed onto the seabed, you got to have you should have made a geotechnical survey or a geological survey is done. to find this soil characteristics and some of these soil characteristics are uh, this friction angle, cohesive strength, soil has two projects, one is the uh, soil basically you will find, I am not going to details, soil basically has two projects, one is called cohesive strength or other you write cohesion and the other is adhesion. You will find this in, in this, this will play a part in shear strength, normally soil shear is calculated based on these two strengths. The cohesion and addition characteristics of the soil, friction angle, so all these has to be found out. Then you have to find out void ratio, that is the empty space within the soil, then water content. then shear strength. So, these are your foundation parameters. Now next pile shaft friction and bearing. Friction means <coughs> skin friction, friction and bearing strength calculations. So, this is best provided in a PY diagram. So, construct PY diagram. So, a lot of input is required, the other is a TZ diagram. So, these two diagrams are referred to the pile shaft. Now, this is horizontal, PY is horizontal pile pressure. versus soil deformation. Now, this the PY diagram is important because it is a laterally loaded pile. Your piles are mostly these are laterally loaded and the other TZ diagram is vertical pile shaft horizontal and vertical pile pressure. <coughs> versus soil deformation. So, <coughs> these two diagrams have to be provided to the client. So, these are come under the uh, foundation design. 
now load the load design is <coughs> very thorough and some of the idea I have already given you. So, load conditions are first is load combinations, how you combine the loads. So, uh, normally uh, whenever you are doing a structural design, so you educate your client on number of load conditions. Ships, I think you have already done this. Your uh, this thing, your stability calculation, that is your GZ calculations. Have you done? Now you find your GZ calculations are done for different load. One is the arrival condition of the ship at port, and that is the departure condition. I don't know whether you have been taught about all this. So like this, you have to specify a number of load com combinations for the jacket. So, these are called this now load con combinations should create extreme member foundation loads. So, we are bothered about the extreme loads. You have to find out which type of condition will give you the extreme loads, whether you, you combine waves and current in one direction or in opposite direction. Normally, you may not get at a particular time all the loads acting in one direction, but you have to design for that kind of eventuality. You cannot escape. Now, this is done from number of critical directions. Number of critical directions of wind, waves, current. find out the worst case scenario. Now, this is so far as the environmental loads. The other is you have to superimpose plus what? Live loads, deck loads. Live loads are mainly coming from the dynamic loads or the vibratory loads. <clears throat> then you have structural weight. Then buoyancy. Then earthquakes. So these are the types of loads will come. Ice, if you have or not normally in our case you would not have ice. So, these have to be given to the and then after this you have, so these uh, after this you will come operating loads. That is you are driving your drill string below the seabed. So, that means you have to have some kind of a hammer at the um, uh, crown. So, these are called operating loads. So, these are governed by operating conditions. Then fatigue, then you have transportation loads, transportation and erection. So, these have to be given in your BOD.
deck equipments. So before you jump into a analysis, this, uh, this is more required because nowadays nobody does all the structure analysis by hand, you know, the computer programs are available, but what this is important because the type of data you are giving to your program. Uh, so, if you go wrong on the data side, then you get all the weird dimensions will come. Okay. So, th that is why he has elaborated out here all the loads. So, deck equipments is one load. Now, uh, here actually the equipments normally you categorize into two categories. One is called the dry that is without any oil or water and the other is the wet, wet equipment and dry equipment load. Now, after dry equipment and the wet equipment, then after this is design accidental load. Now, accident can happen because of object drop, fire, then collisions. So, these all these loads have to be basically impact and uh, you have studied in vibration what was that? impulse load, impulse and impact loads will come out here. So, those are accident loads, normally they are designed with a factor of safety, factor of safety. Factor of safety set to unity. Factor of safety, I think, is defined by your uh, extreme load by design load. I think that is your uh, working stress by extreme. So this is unity. That means you design for this load, but you don't exceed take greater than this load. Now after this, you have to say uh, design regulations. Now, you have to tell the client which regulation you have followed. Say normally you will find ABS, DNV, then API codes. So, that means the structure that you are designed will conform to which code. Either one of these codes and normally I think a surveyors from all these classes they will come. Yeah, if you design for API, ABS will also survey your platform. So, which codes? There are also other codes that is called ISO, International Standards Organization, ANSI. ANSI, I do not know what is this ANSI. Then you have ASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, AWS, American Welding Society. So, all these codes have to be followed. Now, after this painting and corrosion plans, corrosion protection plans, or rather you have to specify the corrosion. So, here you have to convince or you have to tell your client your painting scheme. What paint protection you are giving? Cathodic protection by means of sacrificial anodes if you have. Uh, 
and sometimes they may give, I do not know anything, I am not a corrosion engineer, so they called impressed current. So this is actually specified by a corrosion engineer. Corrosion engineer or a, the, what is called normally this is done by a painting engineer or this, this is his job. So these are the protection that you are going to give into the platform because it is the operating condition is a corrosive environment. Your sea water is mainly a corrosive environment where you have electrolytes from sodium and chlorine that is going to corrode your structure. So adequate corrosion protection has to be given to the platform. Then if you have any uh, particular requirements or miscellaneous requirements. So, these are actually owner specific. So, this will consist mainly of deck cranes. You have to specify crane types, their lifting capacity, and all these things, and uh, riser clamps. So, these will come under the BOD. So, those these are miscellaneous requirements. Now, after you have done this, then you go for this. Selection of member size. Member means structural member. So, <coughs> at this stage, your design data that you have calculated from the previous BOD, design data is fixed is confirmed rather. The design data has to be confirmed because you before you actually plunge yourself into member size calculation. Now how do you go about this? Now the first thing is select similar platform in similar environmental conditions. This is similar to your the, the basic ship design approach. Uh, this, this is the first. So that means this forms your guideline. So you are actually not in the deep water. Okay, as uh, I mean, uh, this is your start. Now here actually, uh, select similar platform in similar environment. Now from here you can get an idea of your member size. member size from design documents or from drawings. Normally most of the companies, the offshore companies, they have a uh, well established design and production office. So if you ask, uh, you, uh, also in shipyard, shipyards normally if you are building uh, ships, then you 
you go into your design office, you ask for your previous design files, okay. So that is your previous archiving actually. <coughs> so nowadays these are actually, uh, all these drawings are done in microfiche archiving or CAD. So from here you can get all the information, okay. This is one area from which you can select. The other is similar person. What else can you do? This is one type from which you can start. Number two, you can start from design experience. So actually you have to draw up on 1 and 2 because you will not get, uh, if you want to design all the information, all the design data you may not get from your similar platform. Then you have to uh, revert back or rest upon your design experience. Suppose a driller or uh, normally you have to design experience from design engineers in the company. Drillers, they will tell you a lot of things. So, normally it is a very experienced personal job. So, these are the two areas in which you can design. design from experience, design similar process and uh, normally sometimes they use these two people thumb, thumb rule calculations. Then after this, so this is your start, after this you go for rigorous calculations. Softwares. Now, here actually you have to from here you can come back here also, give design checks. Suppose you find your calculations and, and what your the experienced engineer is saying they are quite, they are not converging or quite out, then there is something some wrong in the flow in the data, the flow in the design. So, these are more in this and uh, softwares are normally they are bought out items or they are designed indigenously by the offshore contractor. So, this uh, now after this you have done the first thing is uh, uh, there are two aspects, pile size selection. <coughs> pile size selection. So, we do not have time actually. Okay. Now, pile size that means this will uh, depend on the environmental load because your major load is being registered by your pipes. So, you select your pile diameter, length and all these things and those pipes are driven through the columns. Those piles in turn will support your deck. Now, once this pile size is fixed, then you can pile bracings. Here are two aspects. So, this actually 
will design your jacket. So, next class we will talk about this and try to work out a small problem on this pile size. However, uh, the thing is that you know, if I go deep into this, then I just cannot cover in one course. This itself is a very huge topic.